Many of you are probably wondering why I'm talking about uranium in an ag groundwater conference, and even more so maybe in an emerging contaminants session, because uh, uranium certainly been around for a long time. Um, but uh, as of late, it's been receiving more attention, um, in part because um, it's been increasing uh, in concentration in some areas due to agricultural uh, landscape development due to irrigation. The primary hypothesis that uh, we're working from uh, was developed by Bryant Jurgens, um, and he showed that in the eastern San Joaquin Valley of California, increased concentrations of uranium in groundwater are related to increases in bicarbonate concentrations due to irrigation development. So we asked ourselves the question uh, in this study, is the same process affecting other parts of the arid western U.S.? So I'm going to talk just a moment about the process that, that Bryant um, uh, uh, worked on and you know, why is um, irrigation development um, uh, increasing uranium concentrations. Well, back in the uh, late 1800s in the San Joaquin Valley, there was mostly dry land farming. And if you go there today, um, you will see it, it looks... Um, like this, it's um, irrigated crops, um, very densely uh, dense agriculture. Um, those irrigated crops have increased um, the recharge. Um, they've increased um, plant respiration and uh, the pressure of CO2 below the root zone. That has caused um, increased bicarbonate concentrations um, uh, below at the water table. And that bicarbonate um, complexes with uranium uh, absorbed onto the sediment particles. Now, this is naturally occurring uranium. It's derived from the granitic rocks of the Sierra Nevada to the east of the valley. Um, and uh, it forms quite stable um, carbonate uranium complexes in groundwater. So if you were to look at the eastern San Joaquin Valley profile, um, this is what you'd see. And um, eight Visser showed uh, some of this with the high uranium in the shallow groundwater in that area. Um, and indeed, we do see that um, along with the high bicarbonate concentrations. And those concentrations of bicarbonate and uranium decrease with depth and with increasing groundwater age as you go deeper in the system. And I also want to point out um, that um, because of the municipal and irrigation um, pumpage um, that is pulling down this high bicarbonate, high uranium water um, deeper into the system. So what does that mean uh, for the U.S.? Um, will we see the same process? Um, we don't have the solid phase data that Bryant Jurgens had or the, we did not do the geochemical modeling um, that he did in order to come up with the process that he developed. Um, but we do have 1,100 sites. Um, these are from the uh, NACWA decadal change networks that Bruce Lindsay talked about yesterday. Um, and they are mostly sampled of, at one point in the 1990s and then again in the 2000s. And just uh, the occurrence data um, in red here, these are wells with concentrations of uranium over the MCL of 30 micrograms per liter. Uh, that's the U.S. EPA MCL. The World Health Organization used the same, uh, uses the same level. Um, and I, on the background here, I have an aridity index. And I uh, use that in this analysis because that's an important point. Of course, in the arid and semi-arid areas, which are these uh, beige and reddish areas here, I combine those two areas and call them arid in this talk. Um, that's where you're going to have the, the irrigation taking place. And then in contrast, um, we have the green, um, which is humid. And this, I also lump in with that, this, this stripe of uh, what's called dry subhumid um, climate here. And I'm going to refer to that as humid. 
uh, in this talk. And um, the other notable thing, uh, well, the notable thing about uh, the, the very highest concentrations occurring mostly in the arid west and, and uh, concentrations below our screening level of one microgram per liter occurring um, along the east, uh, particularly in the coastal plain aquifers. This is the AeroRad data, and um, I just wanted to point out that, you know, if that's part of the, the uh, puzzle here. Um, you know, very high uh, concentrations of, of uh, uranium in superficial rocks and sediments in the west. And if you look at this in box plot form, um, this is uranium in groundwater. Uh, concentrations are significantly higher in the arid climate than in the humid climate. Uh, uranium in the surficial rocks and sediments are significantly higher in the arid climate than in the humid climate. And then I took a ratio between these two variables and uh, still ended up with higher uh, ratio in the arid setting than the humid, which means there's something besides just a uh, source uh, rocks, um, ex, you know, uh, causing this increased um, concentration in the arid environment. In order to um, look at um, uncertainty in our measurement uh, of our data, um, we looked at replicate data for uranium and bicarbonate. Um, we took 408 uranium replicate samples and 151 bicarbonate replicates. And um, we were looking for um, what was a reasonable cutoff for uh, measurement error. And um, it just so happens that plus or minus 10% um, difference in concentration between the two uh, replicates um, falls between the 90 and 95th percentile of differences um, for both bicarbonate and uranium. And so that goes into um, these, uh, what I'll call definition of terms. I'm going to use a couple terms here, and one I'm calling a large difference, and that means the difference is greater than that measurement error, potential measurement error of 10%, and small difference uh, means that the difference uh, in concentrations is within the range of uncertainty. I'm also going to talk about what I'm calling concordant wells, those are wells where uranium and bicarbonate are changing in the same direction, and that um, those wells are ones that I would say are seeing the same sort of process that uh, Jurgens found. Um, and then discordant wells, and those are where uranium and bicarbonate are going in opposite directions, and those I feel there's some other process going on there. So there was... Uh, Yes, yeah, states on there. I think we saw this yesterday. Um, <laughs> um, this is the decadal change map. Um, oops, wrong button. Um, the the uh, solid red color dots are concordant changes with uranium and bicarbonate both increasing. They occur mainly in the west, although there's a few wells scattered uh, in the in the east. Um, the, the solid blue dots are where your uh, concordant uh, decreases in uranium and bicarbonate, and they occur uh, generally in the same places as um, the increases. Um, the discordant samples where uranium and bicarbonate are going the opposite direction are these little X signs, which you probably can't see from the back of the room, but there are not very many of those. Um, what is noticeable, um, if you can see it, is these um, open uh, circles here, and those are uh, the locations where um, the uranium and bicarbonate changes are uh, sm either small differences or no change. And since these were uh, non-detect uh, in, in uh, one decade, that means they are non-detect in both decades, so really very, very low uranium here. Rather than counting dots, um, here's um, uh, just a table of the large differences in uranium and bicarbonate. And the, the diagonals here, the, the 109 and the 76, those are the concordant samples where the uranium and bicarbonate are going the same direction. Uh, about 
um, of those samples uh, fall within the arid climate. And then these handful of wells um, in the discordant category. Um, this uh, graph here, um, the, on the y-axis, this is the percent change in uranium concentrations between decade one and decade two. Um, and then that's plotted against uranium concentration in decade two. And um, the first thing that you'll notice is that there's a, a significant number of wells that lay up here um, so that there are larger, there are more uh, large increases in uranium than there are uh, large decreases in uranium. Um, if you look at the colors, um, these red circles are places uh, where not only is uranium increasing by a large amount, um, but also have large increases in bicarbonate concentrations. So those are those concordant samples. And here we have uranium decreasing by relatively small amounts and in the blue and also bicarbonate decreasing by a small amount. Um, where bicarbonate is small or no difference, those are the green dots and they tend to lie along this line uh, that I've delineated for the, the uncertainty in the uranium concentrations. This is the same graph, only I've changed the symbology. Um, what I've done here is plot um, concordant wells versus discordant wells and uh, by climate. And so what you'll see here are the red wells, which are the arid zone wells, um, the concordant ones being the red circles um, as opposed to the little X's. Um, uh, they tend to be at higher concentration and make up a good proportion of the wells that are having the large increases in uranium concentration. In contrast, the humid environment uh, wells, uh, the blue ones tend to cluster over here at low concentrations and low increases in uranium concentration. And just to put this briefly into a uh, human health perspective, um, if uh, concentrations increase at the same rate that uh, concentrations increased in the last decade, uh, wells within this envelope here um, that were increasing uh, during the last decade are going to bump up over the uh, MCL. Uh, in 50 years, um, these wells uh, in this envelope here are going to bump up over the MCL. So um, that's just to give you an idea. And most of these dots are um, the red dots, which are the arid um, wells where both uh, uranium and bicarbonate are increasing. Uh, if you remember back to the slide uh, from the eastern San Joaquin Valley uh, where we had the high bicarbonate, high uranium and the shallow groundwater, um, that's also what we see here in the arid environment. Um, highest uranium in the shallow wells um, decreasing with depth. Um, a shallow well is a well that's less than or equal to 150 feet below land surface. Uh, a screen there, and a deep well is a well that's screened more than 150 feet below land surface. If you look in the humid environment at the wells there, um, relation to depth, you can see there's something um, quite different going on. And um, same as in the eastern San Joaquin Valley, um, in the arid environment, bicarbonate concentrations um, are also significantly uh, decreasing with depth um, uh, highest in the shallowest groundwater. Um, and that again is consistent with what was seen in the eastern San Joaquin Valley. Um, again, by in the, in the human environment, the uh, bicarbonate concentrations are going the opposite direction. Uh, you know, some other process affecting bicarbonate in that area um, possibly redox or something like that. Did some uh, frequency uh, speciation calculations um, and looked at um, the U and uranium in the six plus valence state, which is the oxic um, form. Um, it turns out that 96 percent 
uh, of all the wells are in this form. Um, there's a handful of wells where um, uranium-4 plus valence state is um, dominant uh, in one, dec one decade or another, excuse me, um, and those are in the human environment. Um, of those uh, wells where uranium-6 plus is dominant, uh, carbonate species are dominant um, in 99% of those samples. And uh, even more than that, um, calcium carbonate uh, complexes are dominant in 98% of those samples. And that is um, definitely consistent with what uh, Jurgens saw, um, those calcium carbonate complexes um, being very persistent uh, in the aquifer. So to summarize here, I just want to point out kind of these four bullets here um, uh, as being uh, mainly uh, what is supporting uh, the, my, my belief that we are seeing um, a similar process going on in parts of the arid west. Um, uranium, uranium changes are concordant with bicarbonate changes and occur mostly in irrigated arid climate. Those large changes in uranium are where bicarbonate is increasing by a large amount as well. Um, most of these large changes are in, again, the irrigated arid climate. Um, and this fact that the uranium and bicarbonate are highest in shallow groundwater in the arid climate, um, I think all of those things go together and um, support the, the hypothesis that Jurgens put forward. Um, Again, though, um, just from human health uh, re perspective, um, if uranium is increasing at the current rate in those wells where, where it's increasing quickly, um, uh, it, they will exceed um, the MCL, so it is of concern. Thanks. Thank you. Questions? You talk about increasing uh, uranium concentration. Do you have any idea where the uh, equilibrium is? You know, we don't expect it to be milligrams, I suppose. There must be, have you calculated on, on uh, how uh, far up would the uh, How high would it, yeah, high, high high it go? Could you expect? Well, I've, I've seen concentrations, the highest concentration that I've seen in this national data set is, is over 1,200 uh, micrograms per liter, and that was in the Carson Valley in Nevada. Um, so, um, you know, I'm not sure, uh, you know, the details of, of what's going on around that particular well, but, um, you know, it can get quite high. So that's, you know, orders of magnitude over the MCL. Any other questions? Is then also very important to uh, have the ionic composition of the water uh, to be included? For instance, the calcium and these type of things, because they also uh, interrelate uh, to the, the carbonate balance. So if you are irrigating with uh, water which has uh, adequate ionic composition, the uh, uranium uh, release may be, uh, may be reduced. Um, that's a possibility. I'm not, I'm not uh, um, as familiar with the work that, that the modeling type work that Bryant has done and whether he looked at that. Um, you know, the type, I just did speciation calculations is all, but, um, you know, you're correct. Um, but uh, we didn't look into that. 